I got a fun question. Okay. Work hard versus talent. What's your take on that? Um, I think that talent is a reality that we all have to deal with. Meaning, like, at least when I talk to clients, it's like, there will be people better than you, right? Like, there is talent. There is people who will move faster, who will learn faster, who just naturally are better dancers than you. And like those people exist and you kind of have to make peace with it. Um, yeah. But I can tell you too, like I have a son who's a natural, he's talented, everything he tries. It's like, he's above average at everything he tries. And in his case, he skates by on that quite a while. It's like, it's not hard for him. So he doesn't really learn how to work hard as much. I got you. Okay. But like my, my, I have another son who is not as talented and he's a little more um, clumsy into like sports and stuff. It's like, he, he has weird body, like he has weird body in space, but he will work. He will work and get better at it. And he's like so determined. And so like, at least what I tell my clients and, and when I talk to my kids and stuff is I'm like, it's nice if you have talent, like good for you, but like, you gotta do, you gotta do the work. You gotta do yeah. it at some point. And and if you want to skate by on your talent for a little while and then just keep changing and doing new things so that you can just enjoy that, I'm like, okay. But you're also maybe not going to get to a level that is like exceptional, but maybe you don't care about that. Do you think you ever had that mentality going into it or like, you know, I want to be the best, but what's your ultimate goal? Mm, I, I don't think of it in those terms. I don't think like, I want to be the best or I want to beat everybody. Like I I'm a competitive person, but truly deeply, it's not about anyone else. It's just, yeah. it's, it's what am I capable of? That's what I want to see. And, and what I'm capable of isn't relevant to if I get first place or not. It's like, I want to see what I'm capable of. I want to see what my edge is. I always kind of want to push the edge and that might mean that some of the time I win, but, yeah. really, but really it's just like me compared to how I was me, if I'm getting better. And I think some people don't believe that, but that's the truth. I mean, it's fun to win. And I think if I, you know, didn't experience that success some of the time, I would be very discouraged too. Yeah. But that's, that can't be your only motivation. You have to be willing, like when I, I talk about it, like it's a pie and I'm like, if your whole pie is the results and that's how you're judging your success, you're going to experience pain about that at some point or another, all of us, because we can't win all the time. Yeah. So I, I always try to think about that pie and, and I want a slice of that pie to be the results, but the rest of the pie is like the relationships that I make at competitions and how my growth is and the personal growth that happens just because you're doing this and it's vulnerable and you're pushing yourself to places that are uncomfortable and learning to overcome that. And so there's so much more in that pie than just like, am I winning or placing? And like, yeah, that counts, but it can't be everything. Yeah. It, it took me a while to get out of that state. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I think I got into like the sports, like competitive side of things later in life. So it was kind of like, I just got, I got to, gotta win I gotta do it you know and and I think when I when I did start losing the first couple times that it hurt yeah <laughs> but it it took me and and sometimes I think it still takes <laughs> me and I always tell people you know uh humility and be humble because every win it's, it's just a win you know? for me if I treat one like if I give weight to to winning way more than losing then I think it would still hurt me so like mentally I'm just like you know what let me go look and see if, like you said, how did I do compared to last time? How did I feel compared to last time? I think that that helps me a lot too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was, I was definitely there. I was one of those people. <laughs> I think, well, and I think like now that I'm moving, like we've been using my silver choreography slash gold and testing open rounds. So, mm -hmm. you know, I went from like winning all the time or placing all the time. So now it's like, okay, let's try some open. And like at USDC, it's like middle of the pack. It's like, okay, I made the finals, but it's like fourth or, 
you know, do the Mambo championship and get sixth, you know, and it is a little bit of a gut punch, you know, it's a little bit of a, like, <laughs> Oh, I haven't seen that in a while, you know, but I think that's healthy. Like, I think, yeah, I think mental, like an emotional health around this is like, those are appropriate reactions to what's happening. And like, as long as you cope with it kind of in healthy, healthy ways, and we're not stuck there for a really long time, I'm like, of course, like, of course, anyone is going to be like, yes, I got first and then like, didn't make a final or like gets a fifth or a sixth place or whatever. And you're just like, oh, don't like that. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, we're not going to be positive all the time. That's not even normal. Like, what was your first competition like? How long had you been dancing and stuff? So without COVID, four years, with COVID, it's five years, yeah. right? Um, so about the same amount of time. And my first competition was, I don't even remember the name of it, but it was in um, Pearlbert. I think that I, <laughs> I had the cheapest dress too, because I couldn't afford nothing. They told me to try on this designer dress. And when they told me the price, I was like, oh my gosh, peel this sucker off of me because I don't want to like pay for any stone. (laughs) But it was a lot of fun. I think the only things that kind of caught me off guard was how fast the rounds were. So I was like, I'm paying all this money and I'm only out there for like a couple seconds. Yeah, that was interesting to see Uh, hair and makeup. That was interesting because at the time I didn't know anything about it. So I just let I let anybody do my hair and my partner at the time you know he did what he could do and it was cute but I think I did I think at one point too I think I paid somebody to do my makeup you try it thank you (laughs) I didn't didn't like it so I think those are the things but overall I think it it was great like it was really beautiful people were very elegant I placed very well because it was newcomers and it was bronze so for that, I, I had a great time and it, it brought me back and I'm like, I'm definitely doing it again. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I know. I, um, I had a girlfriend who is like a makeup. I mean, she's not a makeup artist, but she loves makeup and she, like her dream was always to be a makeup artist, but she's Asian and her parents would like never approve of that. So she went to school to be a pharmacist. Right. So it's like, she's a pharmacist. Oh, yeah. She like loves makeup and is obsessed with makeup. So she what was so funny was like, so my first competition was the holiday, which was in Vegas. That's and, a big one. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I didn't know any it's, I mean, it's yeah. So, um, so that was going to be my first competition. I had been dancing with Mark for three months and, um, I texted one of my friends who was kind of traveling back and forth between Vegas at the time. And so I was like, Hey, if you're going to be in Vegas these dates, I'm going to be dancing. And she was like, I'm not, but I'm moving all my flights. And so she could be there. And then she said, do you know, Mia is going to be there. And Mia is my pharmacist friend that does makeup. And she was going to be there for a pharmacy conference, like just so happened. And it was the same hotel. I was like, oh my gosh, it was just like the stars aligned. And I was like, okay, Mia, you're going to be my makeup artist. So she did my makeup there. My next competition was New York dance festival. She, and she came to New York. I had three friends come and my husband to New York for this competition and just the New York trip, obviously. And yeah. they all paid their own way. But Mia was like, I'm going to come because you need your makeup artist. And I was like, OK. So she came. <laughs> and then COVID hit. Right. So year, nothing. And then she actually came to my first competition when I came back, which was Heritage. But that year it was in Atlanta. And then after that, she couldn't come to my competitions all the time. So I was like, oh, so I had my makeup done a couple of times by other people, but I never liked it as much. Then I just started like, you know what? I'm good enough with makeup. I, I think I could do it. So really since then, I just do my own makeup. I always get my hair done by someone else because they do it better. But um, I always do my own makeup now. And even at USDC, I was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to splurge. I'm just gonna let somebody else do it. So I don't have to think about it. And I was like, oh, <laughs> like, I mean, it was, it was okay. I just like the way I do it better. All I'm saying is, I go on these people's portfolios, like pretty much a lot of different makeup artists that come to the uh, competitions. And I'm like, I don't see a single person that looks like me without a tan, without a tan. (laughs) But I'm like, how about you show me someone that looks like you? So I'm not freaking spending a hundred and X amount of dollars for something that I I look dead on. I look like a corpse. I look like I'm about to go on the ground, not on the dance. Right. So 
And and nobody wants to take a you know take a limb. I'm like, how about we don't even do it for a comp? How about you just do it for your portfolio to show that people who look like me can come to you when they come? Man, nobody ever wants to do. It. I was like, all right. So before I learned how to do makeup, like, well, you probably already know how to do makeup. I didn't know how to do makeup for real. Um, well, I kind of had to figure it out. I mean, I I was okay with like regular day to day makeup, but when after Mia had done my makeup, I went to her when she couldn't come to my comps anymore, and I was like. Will you just like show me what you do and like walk me through it? And, and, you know, and ever since then, it's just like, keep trying, keep practicing, keep figuring it out. And so that's just what I keep doing. And I, it, it's, it's good enough. I mean, it does the job. But no, you look great. I like the makeup. I like your choices that you've made in there. So keep, keep doing it. I won't, I will not skimp on my hair either. Gosh, I remember the first time I ever saw you. It was like, I was stunned. Like, your, your hair, it was like, I think it was blonde and it was like cascading curls. Was it like, I just, oh, like, you're talking about the braids? I, I think yes. well, there's a few okay, so it was braids and then it was like, two braids and the, yeah. yes. And it was like, <laughs> and then you had this, your gold dress on, which is like warrior princess. I mean, I, <laughs> and you came out on the floor and I was like, I like lost my mind. I was like, that queen. I just was like, so anyway, that's that. You were talking about your hair. That reminded me of that. You had the braids and then like the cascading. Oh, so good. I love, I love that hair. And I'm telling you, my stylist, we played around so much because she doesn't typically do ballroom hair at all. Right. I mean, she's like, she's a good hairstylist. She's dope. Like really dope. Yeah. What she does. But she's not used to doing hair that doesn't have to move. That won't fall out when I'm spinning super fast. Right? So, yeah, man. It, it took some time to come up with something that can work for both and wouldn't fall out. Mm -hmm. so. Well, and here's, here's the thing is like, I had this pro, this female pro I was talking to, and she was talking about your, like our look. Cause we were asking yeah. her about like how you choose a dress and like how you figure out what to do. And she was like, well, what really matters is that you have like a look, like there's something that's an edge or there's something that's like, you're telling a whole story in your look. There's a lot of people that will come out on the floor and it's like, they've got a nice dress. Like it's a nice dress. It's pretty. Yeah. You know, and their hair is pretty and their makeup looks good, but it's like, what's nothing the that stands out. Yeah. And yeah. So, like when you came out on the floor, it was like, bam, I'm like, there's a, like, there's a look, you know, it's like the hair and the dress. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she's like a warrior. And I was just like, she just, it's like, you just took over the floor and you took over people's attention. Right. And she had said something similar to me. She's like, you got that whole hair, the whole red yes, hair thing. Yes. Like, and then, but, man. but you pick things that are like, like an animal print or like something that's like got a little bit of an edge. It's just a little bit like, oh, like that makes people go, oh, what's going on over there? And she's yes. like, that's what you want. And like, that's what you have with that whole dress and that whole look like off the charts. Like, yes. And I died. I'm like, I'm saying the same thing. Like, I see your dress in the back right there. Yeah. That's <laughs> That dress right there, I'm telling you, with that red hair, you guys haven't seen it because you see her hair kind of like short. I mean, she has it and it's like all the way down. It's like Queen Ivy out here. Yeah. Okay, because uh, I'm telling you, that red pony, hair. Yeah, the ponytail. Yes. <laughs> that was kind of a accident too. So I had kind of shorter hair at the time and I was like at this nail salon with my girlfriends and we were talking about like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with my hair because I hadn't had it red very long. And I was like, I mean, I used to do a fake bun when my hair was brown, but when it was red, I couldn't ever find a red bun. So I was like, that's the yeah. right color. And so I was like talking to my friends, I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And this nail lady was like, Oh, you have to go to this store. It's in Portland. And it's like an ethnic hair store. She's like, they will they have all kinds of colors. Yes, I'm like, yes. yes. <laughs> I went into that store and I was like, for twenty five ninety nine, you can grow your hair overnight. I'm telling you, people don't know they're sleeping on the beauty supply stores. In, in your your local neighborhood hood. Okay, I'm just telling yeah, you. <laughs> it was. And it's a huge store. And I was like, <gasps> like I walked in and I was like, oh my gosh, like just all colors, all lengths, like curly. Like it was so much fun. And but of course, for this color of red, I'm like, there's something. And and um the first time I used it, I think so. I just it was just a big red hair extension. And and I just made a ponytail and I wrapped it around the ponytail until it was done. And the next competition, I was like, going to pay somebody to do it. And so I was just going to say, Hey, just like make it into a ponytail. And, and then that was the start of the red ponytail. 
And like, it's kind of a thing, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a trend now. Yeah. I just, but you do have a twin out there. I think I do. <laughs> I saw a video on Instagram. I saw a video on Instagram and I'm like, I thought it was me for a second. I was like, I didn't, I wasn't there. I'm like, who's that guy? And then I was like, oh, that's not me, obviously. <laughs> but it looked a lot like me, but her hair was, the one I saw her hair was up. Like in a, in a yeah. high, high bun. And so then I was like, oh, okay, I got, I, I can like experiment. I can figure out something else. Especially this dress. Cause this dress has buttons on the back. And so my ponytail gets oh, stuck. Yeah. So I'm like, ugh, like I kind of need to figure out how to wear it up in a way I like. Oh, I have so much hair caught in that gold dress. It's insane. I'm like trying to like peel it off without destroying Mm-hmm. All of the you know details on there. It's it's gross. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The uh, we deal with here. I- 